don't let bad color grading ruin your nice pictures. Today, I'll share with you five color grading mistakes you might be making, and most importantly, how you can fix them. Mistake number one, color grading with a badly calibrated monitor. If your monitor isn't displaying color correctly, how then do you expect to get a proper color after you finish color grading? Because what looks really good on your monitor can look terrible when you send it to a client or when you upload it online. Now here's how you can fix it. Before you start using your monitor to color grade, make sure your monitor is properly calibrated so that the color you have on your monitor is going to be the same color you have when you upload it online or when you send that image to a client. Now there are different ways or tools you can actually use to calibrate your screen and I shared how I did mine in this video right here and I'll be leaving the link to this video in the short below of this video so you can watch it after you finish watching this video so you can know how to properly calibrate your screen. Mistake number two is ignore your white balance. Now white balance is the foundation of your image color grading and if you ignore the white balance of your image, your image is going to look unnatural. Now here's how to fix that. Take a look at this image right here. You can see the white balance of this image is off. So before you start color grading your image, make sure you fix the white balance and you can do the same thing inside of Lightroom or Camera Raw. To fix the white balance of your image, you can actually do it manually or do it automatically. So to fix the white balance of your image automatically, just select this picker tool and select on any neutral color on your image like the white, the black or the gray. So with this picker to selected, I'm going to select this gray part right here to fix the white balance. So see the before and the after. Alright, I'm just going to reset that and do it manually. So to do it manually, looking at this image, you can see the image is looking too warm. So I'll come to my Kelvin and just take the Kelvin towards the blue side to just cool it down a little bit like this. Also, I can choose to play with the tint. I'll move it towards the magenta side and towards the blue side and see which one works. So I think I'm just going to move it towards the magenta side a little bit like so. Alright, and just move this Kelvin towards the blue side even more like this. Alright, so see the before and the after before and the after so before you start color grading your image make sure you actually take your time to fix the white balance it's very very important like i said earlier it is the foundation of your color grading and mistake number three is not balancing your image first before you start color grading your image make sure the exposure the contrast the highlights and the shadow are all balanced if you don't balance your image it's going to be very difficult to color grade your image now let's use this image right here as an example so take a look at this image right here you can see it's overexposed so we have to balance it before actually color grading the image so the first thing i'm going to do i first of all fix the white balance like i explained earlier i'm seeing a tint of green on this image so i'll come to my tint and just move it towards the magenta side a little bit like so also Take down the Kelvin towards the blue side a little bit like this. Now, see this image is overexposed. I'm going to my exposure and just take down the exposure a little bit like so. Also, I come to my high dynamic range, just take down the highlight a little bit like this to bring back some details on the highlight part of the image. Now, I'll come back to my exposure and just open up my exposure a little bit so I'll bring it up. Then, to add contrast to this image, I come to my levels and just move the shadow part inside like this and push this highlight part inside like this to add contrast to my image. Now I'm just going to scroll the way up to my white balance and just come to my Kelvin and just add a little bit of warmth to the image just like this. Alright, so I think like this works for me. So see the before and the after. Now we have a base to color grade. In fact, this is the first thing I do on any image before actually taking the image to Photoshop to color grade or do retouching. This is the first thing I try to do. I balance the image first. So make sure you balance your image first before doing color grading. And mistake number four is going overboard with colors. Now this is a big one. It's really easy to go overboard when color grading. Now I've seen a lot of images online that people do go overboard with colors. Now, except you are going for an artistic look, what I advise you to do is to just try and boost the existing color presence on your own image. Now this is what I do for 90% of all my images. So once I open my image inside of Photoshop, I'll duplicate my background layer by pressing on Command J or Control J. To color grade this image, I come to filter and I come to camera filter. Once I open camera filter, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to scroll all the way down and just come to my calibration. And under my calibration, I'll come to my blue primary array. So under my blue primary array, I'm going to come to my saturation and just take the saturation of the blue primary up to about 40 or 30. I don't go above 40 actually. So I come to the hue of the blue primary array. If I move it towards the blue side, you can see I'm adding greens to the image. If I think if I take it towards this side, I'm adding magentas to the image. So I'm going to play with it and see which one works for me. So I think I'm going to take it towards the green side a little bit like this. Alright. So from here, I'll come to the green primary as well. 
I'll play with the hue and saturation. So I think I'm going to take the saturation up to about plus four or plus five. Then I come to the saturation and just play with the saturation and see. So I'm going to leave the saturation at zero. Then I come to the red primary as well. Just play with the hue and see. So I'm going to leave the hue. Then I'll play with the saturation. Let's see. So I'll take the saturation up a little bit to four. So let's see the before and after of what we've done so far. So see the before and the after. Just a tiny difference, but you can see the before and the after. Then from here, what I will do, I'll just come to my vibrance. It just add a little bit of vibrance like this. So see the before and the after. The before and the after, and I'll click on OK. I just did a little bit of color grading, but it's looking so much better. So when it comes to color grading, less is often more. So just try and boost the existing color presence of your image if you are not going for any artistic look. So that's what I'll advise you to do. And mistake number five is not educating yourself about color grading. A lot of photographers don't have an idea or don't have the basic about how color grading or how color actually works. Now here's how you can fix that. By taking your time to learn and understand how color grading actually works or the basic of color theory can help you color grade your image much better. Now I want you to know that color grading is an act. There's no right or wrong way to color grade. It all depends on the look you are going for. And color grading is just one aspect of getting a good image and retouching is another aspect. So if you are struggling with retouching and you want to learn how to retouch, check out this video right here. I'll see you guys in my next one. Stay creative.